If you think we're on the run We are the boys who will stop your little game We are the boys who will make you think again Cause who do you think you are kidding Mr. Hitler If you think old England's done Mr. Brown goes off to town on the A21 But he comes home each evening and he's ready with his gun So who do you think you are kidding Mr. Hitler If you think old England's done Oh, hello Mr. Godfrey You remember me? I'm Mrs. Fox of course, sir. Uh, can I do anything for you? Uh, well, uh, I wanted to have a word with Mr. Jones. Well, you're going for a march around the town. I, I feel he'd be some little time yet. Oh, uh, well, I promised to phone him at eight. But as I was passing, I thought I'd put him out of his misery. Never mind, I'll phone as promised. Bye. Bye. Here, 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 here. Right, please. Turn up! Lift her! Order up! Stand at ease! Where's Corporal Jones? Excuse me, Mr. Benry. Yeah? <laughs> Remember when we came into the high street and you said right wheel? <laughs> he didn't. <laughs> He walked straight on with a sully grin on his face. <laughs> did you notice this? Yes, I did, sir. Why did you tell me? Well, I didn't want to upset you. Upset? I saw a little throstle bird, sir, and I said to myself, what a pretty throstle. Isn't life wonderful? And when I looked round, he's all gone and left me, Captain. My <laughs> mind's usually full of warlike things, not birds. Fall out. I haven't seen him in the office, would you? Uh... Yes, of course, sir, yes, yes. I'm getting worried about Jones. Woolly-headed. Yes, I have noticed, sir. Mm. If it doesn't improve, I shall have to replace him. I can't be expected to face a Nazi invasion with a woolly-headed corporal. <laughs> Come in! Ah, it's you, Jones. I was just going to send for you. Yes, sir. Permission to have a heart-to-heart man-to-man talk, sir. Yes, of course. Come in and sit down. All right, Joseph. You sit down here. There you are. Let's see. Can I start? Yes, of course. Have you noticed the spring in my step, Captain Henry? I'd hardly describe it as that. <laughs> what about you, Mr. Wilson? Do you see a glint or a gleam in my eye? Well, now you can't imagine it, Journey. You, you do look a little bit different. I have fallen in love, Captain Henry, <laughs> with a woman. <laughs> I see. Sir, I have the honour to ask your permission to get married. Well, it's really nothing to do with me, Joan. Well, don't say that, Captain Manning. You're my commanding officer and my very help in trouble. Yes, but uh, you're not in any trouble, are you, Jonesy? Oh, oh, no. <laughs> See, Jones, you're technically a civilian and free to marry when and whom you like. But do you give me your permission, Captain Manning? Oh, very well, if you want it, yes. Yes, all right. Oh, bless you, sir. I knew you wouldn't let me down. He's a lovely man. <laughs> who is the lady in question? Mrs. Fox. Quite sure that you're in love with her? I'm besotted with her. <laughs> That's not quite the same thing. I see her face everywhere I go. I see it in the trees and the hills. I even saw it yesterday on the gasworks. <laughs> and every morning I see it on the pillow beside me. Not really on the pillow. You didn't think that, did you? <laughs> and everywhere I glance, there she is, like a will of the wasp. <laughs> I'm quite sure this isn't just a, a passing fancy. Oh, no, it's definitely not a passing fancy. I've fancied her for 17 years. <laughs> Jersey, are you absolutely sure that you want to marry her? 
No, I said, no. I'm tortured by self-doubt. I'm only a humble butcher, you know. Is it true affection she feels for me? Does she love me for myself? Or does she love me for my meat? <laughs> planning to get married? Well, I don't know. She'll have me. Well, you mean you haven't asked her yet? Oh, yes, I've asked her. I've even offered her an ultimatum. <laughs> She's supposed to telephone me up at 8 o'clock with the answer. Can I sit by the phone, sir? Let me, let me sit next to the phone, sir. No, I'm sorry, you can't, sir. You've got to be sitting next to the Look here, Jonesy, Jonesy, now, why don't you wait outside in the hall, and then when she calls, we'll come and fetch you, all right? Oh, Mr Wilson. What would I do without your compromising suggestions? <laughs> well, sir, I should be waiting on Tenderhook, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Good morning, sir. Dear, dear. He's, uh, he's really got it badly, hasn't he, sir? Here he is. <laughs> what did he say? He said yes. He's a lovely man. He really is a lovely man. <laughs> you shouldn't have asked him, huh? Mrs. Fox is a fine, big widow woman. He should have taken her and hung the consequences. Oh, I don't think there'd be any consequences. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, she called in just before you came back. She called in? What did she say? What did she well, say? She said as she was passing, she'd put you out of your misery. Put me out of my misery? But what does that mean? They do it to dumb animals when they're past hope. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to ring at 8 o'clock. I think it's going to be all right. Yeah. It's exciting, isn't it? Yeah. Can I come to your bachelor party the night before the wedding, Mr Jones? Of course you can, Pikey. You can all come. Be a lot of bachelors there, won't there? Yeah. I mean, Mr Godfrey's a bachelor, I'm a bachelor, Mr Fraser's a bachelor. Yeah, but Mr Fraser, he hasn't always been a bachelor, have you, Mr Fraser? Oh, yeah, I have indeed do. Mind you, I've never been wanting a lassie. <laughs> <laughs> Well, tell me, have you ever asked one of them and then she phoned up later and said no? <laughs> As a matter of fact, she said yes. <laughs> For a while, anyway. Hey, man, she was a fine lassie. <laughs> she had long, sturdy legs and she loved to tread the path by the high cliff with the night wind blowing through her Tresses. One night, she never come back. <laughs> it seemed she was blown over the cliff. <laughs> Carried out to sea. Every night, I stood on that very cliff and shouted, Jesse! Jesse, will you know, come back to me. But the wind just blew the words back in my face. They mocked me. Mocked me to hear. Many years after, I received a letter. It, uh, I was sure that it was contained news of her. My fingers shook as I opened it. My son, I still carry it here, next to my heart. Your heart's on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> Dear James, I shall always love you. I still wear your ring. I'm in Singapore and I want to come home and be wed. Please send forty pounds. <laughs> Yours forever, Jesse. Did you send it, Mr. Fraser? Away with you, boy. Do you think I'm made of money? <laughs> There's a telephone. There's a telephone. Don't panic. Don't panic. Go Don't on. panic. Go There's a telephone. It's Mrs. Fox. It's Go Mrs. Mrs. Fox. That's Mrs. Fox. Hello, my darling. It's me. Now you're going to give me the answer and don't keep me waiting in suspense any longer because I love you and love you and love you and I want to be with you forever and ever. Oh. 
It's the Colonel for you, Captain. <laughs> Hello, sir. Mannering here. I'm sorry about that, sir. What's he say? What happened? She turned you down. It wasn't her, uh, but it will be in a minute. I wish she'd get off that phone. Oh. You're going to be long on the phone, Captain Mannering. Get out, Jones. Very good, sir. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Mrs. Fox, she'll be phoning up in a minute, nor she'll get the engage signal. <laughs> they the phone. I see. Yes, of course. Yes, ho ho hold on a minute. Jones, I want you to keep very calm. This is for you. <laughs> Jack Jones, Jack Jones, the butcher. She wants me to sit down, sir. Well, give, give him a chair. All right, now sit down here, Jonesy. Come on, sit down. <laughs> sit down and try not to get too worked up. Oh, thank you, Mr. Wilson. He's a lovely man. He really is a lovely man. Yeah, yeah. the phone. Oh, oh, yes. I am now sitting down. Yes. 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 Thank you for letting me know. Trying to keep calm, Captain Manning. I really am trying to keep calm. Now, never mind, Josie. Never mind. Never mind. You know, it's, it's not the end of the world, you know. She's a lovely woman, you know. Yes. She really is a lovely woman. It's no good. I can't keep calm. I'm going to break. She said she loved me, you know. She said, yes. I'm going to marry Mrs. Fox. 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 <laughs> Yeah. Very well, Mrs. Fox. I'll call round tomorrow evening, six o'clock. Yes. And you can rest assured that anything you say to me will be treated with the strictest confidence. All right. Good, good, goodbye. Come in. Oh, it's you, Wilson. Yes. Are the men gone? Yes, sir, they have. Uh, did you uh, did you want them? No, I didn't, but I did want to speak to you again about Jones. Oh, yes, he is still rather excitable, isn't he? You would have thought he might have calmed down after a week. Do you think I'm doing the right thing in letting him go ahead with this? Well, you have no authority to do anything else. Uh, on the other hand, it may work out all right, you know. After all, they're, they're both the same class. Yes. <laughs> do, you, uh, do you really think class matters? Oh, no question. No question about it at all. <laughs> Families that make the trouble. I had to contend with all sorts of snobbish rubbish when I married Elizabeth. <laughs> did you, um, did you, as it were, marry beneath you? Oh, no, no. No, the family rather thought that she did. Oh. <laughs> She's very well connected, you know, Elizabeth. Her father was the suffragian Bishop of Clagthorpe. Oh. <laughs> was he really? They had a very sheltered life, you know, Elizabeth. Ha, ha. Very funny. <laughs> Do you know she hadn't even she hadn't even tried tomato sauce before she met me? <laughs> uh, I shouldn't put that right. Yeah, marrying you must have opened up a whole new world for me. <laughs> oh, yes, I, I think it did. But I never felt I never felt at ease with her parents, you know. Always got the impression they were looking down their noses at me. Yeah, this was even after I, I'd become assistant manager. Oh, weren't they impressed by that? Ooh, not a bit. It was quite a big branch, too, you know. I had my own partition cubicle. Mm. <laughs> Did you? Still, Jones and Mrs. Fox won't be bothered with things like that, will they? Mrs. Fox has asked me to go around and see her, you know. If it's a question of advice, I shall be non-committal. Let no man put asunder, eh, Wilson? Yes, yeah, quite right, sir. Marriage falls asunder quite easily anyway, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, no. Not in my case. I, I've had a very happy marriage. Very happy indeed. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all. Good night, sir. Good night. Good night. Mrs. Fox? Mrs. Fox? Oh, oh, 
hello, Captain Mannering. My goodness, it's not six o'clock already, is it? 6.02, to be precise. Oh, my clock stopped <clears> again. <throat> I am sorry. Anyway, make yourself at home. I won't be a second. I'll leave the door open so we can keep on talking while I'm getting dressed. <laughs> Look, I'll come back in five minutes. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Oh, please don't go. I'm perfectly decent underneath. Oh, I'm quite sure you are. <laughs> please sit down. Please. Oh, very well. There. <clears throat> I hope you don't mind coming to my little nest. It's humble, but it's all mine. <laughs> I, uh, I wanted a few moments alone with you before the others arrive. The others? What others? <laughs> oh, uh, Mrs. Pike and Mr. Wilson. Oh. Oh, my goodness, I've got a catch. Do you think that'll run? I don't know, I'm sure. Would you mind awfully if I didn't put them on? Not in the least. <laughs> well, I, I think a lady... I don't like to see a lady with bare legs, and, well, I think a ladder looks even more abandoned. Don't you? Uh, yes, yes, I'm sure you're right. <laughs> I, I expect you're wondering what's on my mind. Yes, I am. <laughs> well, you see, it's like this, Mr Mannering. I've always had what you might call a soft spot for you. And I've had a very high regard for you as well. Oh, dear. I, I'm not expressing myself very well, am I? Oh. Mr Mannering. Yes? Yeah. You don't want me to beat about the bush, do you? Well, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> well, you see, I haven't got a father. In fact, I've no male relations whatsoever. You wouldn't give me away, would you? Wouldn't I? <laughs> at the wedding. Oh, at the wedding. Oh, I see what you mean, yes. Ah, oh, well, yes, of course, if you want, if you wish me to. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Mannering. Mm. Oh, you are a darling. Oh, <laughs> oh, you've no idea what a weight that is off my mind. Look, uh, I think I'll go and come back when the others are due to arrive. Oh, come in, Mrs. Pike. Come along in, Arthur. Come in, Frank. Good evening, Mrs. Fox. Oh, good evening. Good evening, Mrs. Fox. Oh, good evening, dear. Take your hat off, Frank. Where are your manners? You're here early, Mr. Manning. No, no, no. I was, uh, I was punctual for my appointment. Uh, Mr. Manning practically caught me in the bath. <laughs> That's uh, somewhat of an exaggeration. <laughs> I hope you don't mind me bringing Frank, but we don't like to leave him on his own when there's a war on. <laughs> Do we, Arthur? What? Well, I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Take your scarf off. There are so very many funny people about. That's right, dear. Mum, what could funny people do to me if they found me on my own in wartime? <laughs> Never you mind. Come in, Jack. Hello, everyone. Oh, oh don't move. Don't move. I want to remember you just standing there. <laughs> Isn't he lovely? I'm sorry I'm late. Oh, you're dead on time, Jonesy. Yeah, Mr. Manring was here first. Had to help Mrs. Fox out the bar. <laughs> it, it, it was all, all quite innocent, wasn't it, Mr. Manring? Oh, totally innocent, totally. Well, now Jack's here, I think we can start. Will you all please sit down? Yes. Come and sit right. down, Arthur. All right, thank you. Sit Over. down, Frank. Over here. Yes. Right. <clears throat> thank you. Sit down, boy. Sit down. Sorry. What are you doing? Well, I, I, I'm very happy to announce that Mr. Mannering is going to give me away. Oh, very nice. Over, dear. And uh, Mrs. Pike has kindly consented to be matron of honour. Yeah. And Mr. Wilson's going to be best man. You're going to be best man? Yes, that's right, I am, yes. I hope you write everything down, otherwise you'll forget it. <laughs> oh, naturally, we won't be having a white wedding. Why not? This is a war on. Now, uh, the bride and the matron of honour will be in turquoise, 
Uh, now, what about the men? Well, I'm going to be wearing my regimental regalia with medals. Oh, that's very nice. Yes. <laughs> I, uh, I think all the men should be in uniform. With medals. I don't think that's a good idea at all. <laughs> no, no, you see, because Mr. Manning and me haven't got any medals, have you? <laughs> It's got nothing at all to do with it. I just think people are getting tired of uniform. Oh, I don't agree. Uh, let's put it to the vote. Now, hands up for uniform and medals. Put your hand down, boy, you know that. <laughs> Still seem to be outvoted. Well, that's settled then. Now, the flowers. Here, yeah, Mildred. Can't you get out the bath on your own? Do I want to be with you? Right, everything's in order in the church. I've checked it myself. Wilson's job, really, of course, but you can't rely on him. Hello, Napoleon. I'm just off to the church. Everything under control, is it? Of course. I didn't know you'd been invited. Of course I've been invited. I'm a friend of the bride. <laughs> I mean... All the guests are ready in church. Don't you think Mr Jones should get in there as well? It's 5-2. Five 5-2? Two. Five two? Yes. Is it so late? Jones! <laughs> There's no sign of Mr Wilson yet. And I'm getting myself in a state. Is it bad luck when the best man doesn't turn up? It's damned inconvenient. Yeah. <laughs> you better get over to the church. It's all right, Mr Jones. He'll be here all right. He was ready when I left. Only, you see, he was rude to Mum, so she's had to put him in his place. Yeah. <laughs> Go over to the church, Mr Jones. Yes. The bride will be here any second. We don't want your meeting before the ceremony, do we? No, we don't want that, do we? Now, that is a bad omen. That is a bad omen. Mr Jones, that is. Jones, come on, church. Oh, yes, right. <laughs> Remember, I want a clear understanding. No confetti. Yes, I think we understand that, Mr Gaitman. Thank you very much. I'm terribly sorry if I'm a little bit late. <laughs> I should jolly well think you are. Where have you been? <laughs> What's all this? I know, I'm awfully sorry, sir, but you see, maybe, sir, Mrs Pike insisted. I'm wearing my uniform from the First World War. She found it in a... She found it in an old tin trunk. It looks ridiculous. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't have dreamt of putting it on, but, I mean, she'd hidden my trousers. <laughs> An officer's uniform? Yeah, that's right. I was an officer. You never told me? Well, you didn't ask me. <laughs> anyway, it was unimportant. These pips denote the rank of captain. Yes, that's right. I was a captain. Well, I'm blessed. <laughs> Doesn't count for anything now, you know. <laughs> Louis! Are you there, Mr Mallory? Look, you better go off into church. All right. Try not to make a fool of yourself. Yes, all right, sir. All right. <laughs> Well, 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 you do look a pretty pair. Uh, thank you. What a lovely bride you make, Mrs Fox. Oh, won't be Mrs Fox much longer. No, no, indeed it won't. Right, well, we're ready when you are, Vicar. Off we go, then. <laughs> Remember, I want a solemn undertaking. No confetti. Oh, oh come on, Mr Heatman. <laughs> you take my arm, Mrs Fox. Mr. Mannering, mm. I think I'm going to cry. Oh, do try not to. <laughs> Here they come. No confetti! No confetti! I'm gonna throw confetti, so Yabu sucks to you. <laughs> Here! Don't, don't be a sports sport! <laughs> I thought you said no confetti. I did enjoy that. So did I. Ah, it's a pagan ceremony. And in that case, I should have thought that a complete waste of time. Captain Mannering, sir. Captain Mannering. The Colonel's just been on the phone, sir. He wants you to put the platoon on 30 minutes standby. Thank you, Mr. You hear that? 30 minutes standby. Must be something afoot. Well, we're all here. 
I will keep it under our heads for the time being, but I think we ought to push things along, don't you? Right, sir. Yes, Start the speeches. Right, sir. Yes, yes, of course. Keep yours short. Yes, I will, yes. Don't get drunk. What? <laughs> Mark, one of these, Miss Godfrey, it's cider. Oh, thank you. And what make us tipsy? No, well, here's the bride and groom. <laughs> bride and groom. <laughs> Probably your turn next, Mr Godfrey. <laughs> Charles nearly got married once, didn't you, Charles? I wanted to. It would never have done. Her parents lived in a bungalow. <laughs> she married a farmer. I see her from time to time. Do you? She's a widow now. Is she? Have another one, Miss Godfrey. <laughs> May I have your attention, please? Pray silence for Captain Manrin, who is acting as the bride's father. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jack and, uh, and uh, Mildred. <laughs> I'm not going to make a long speech. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I've known Jack for many years, and he's the salt of the earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's loyal, he's brave, and he's very kind. And I have no hesitation in saying to you, uh, uh, M Mildred, <laughs> that he's the first man you should turn to if you're in any sort of trouble. Well, she's not in trouble, Captain. No, no, no. <laughs> I wish you both the very best of luck. And may you be as happy as I have been with my own dear wife, who unfortunately can't be with us this afternoon. Where is she, then? She's staying with her sister. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Jack and... and Mildred. Uh, Jack and Mildred! Come on, speech. Come on. Come on. You couldn't give the speech. You! You! Oh, oh. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank Captain Manning for saying all those kind things and also for standing in as the bride's father, which he isn't. Oh. <laughs> and thank you all for coming along and good health, everyone! Good health! Good, health. good, health. good, health. good luck. Your uh, turn now. Uh, keep it short. Well, I, I don't have to speak at all. Yes, you do. We have to toast the matron of honour. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Uh, Captain, uh, Sergeant Wilson, <laughs> now say a few words. Right. Thank you very much indeed, everybody. But um, it's my pleasure to propose the toast of the, uh, of the bridesmaid or the uh, matron of honour, I should say. <laughs> a lady whom I've known for a considerable number of years. Ladies, <laughs> 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 you are... You are one of that happy band of uh, women who give out so much affection and uh, so much love, which you don't always get in return. <laughs> anyway, I... Uh, <laughs> I think that hat you're wearing is very pretty. I like it. <laughs> anyway, I'd like to propose now the, the health of the Matron of Honour. Matron of Honour. This is fine. Thank you. We haven't cut the cake. Whatever oh, next. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Dear. We'd forget our heads if they weren't screwed on, wouldn't we? <laughs> oh, uh, where's my bayonet? Captain Manorin, sir. Captain Manorin. Yes. Colonel's on the phone again. Wants to speak to you personally. Yes, come along, guys. Yeah. Go around. Yeah. 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 Oh, no, that's only cardboard. Oh. <laughs> 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 well, uh, there is a war on, you know. <laughs> Hello, sir. Mannering here. Ah, uh, Mannering. Everything's a bit confused here, but all units are standing by immediately. Good Lord. Does that mean the balloon's gone up? Well, not exactly, but barges are moving around the North Sea coast. And the weather's right, so we can't take any chances. Right, sir. I'll put my men at action stations at once. Good luck. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please. Order, please. Fight, fight. Please. Right, just have your attention for a moment. There's no cause for alarm, but I want all members of the Home Guard to parade outside in the yard immediately, please. Oh. Quickly as you can. Pick up your rifles on the way. What's going on, Napoleon? You better contact your headquarters at once. There's an invasion alert on.
Bet you didn't think you were going to spend your wedding night with me, did you, Mr Jones? <laughs> no, I did not, Pikey. You were going to the Esplanade Hotel Eastgate, weren't you? Yeah. Never mind. Duty comes first. I wonder if they give me the deposit back on the room. <laughs> oh, who goes there? It's me, Mrs Jones. Mrs Jones? I don't know no Mrs Jones. <laughs> Jack, me. Oh, 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 Mrs. Jones, the butcher's wife. Yeah. I thought I'd come and sit with you a while. Oh, well, that's a good idea. Here, Pikey, if you keep a good lookout, and me and the missus, we'll go and sit down and have a nice little chat. A nice little cuddle and all. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like that, Pikey. Oh. Come on, come on, my precious. <laughs> yes, yeah, right. Oh, Jack. Oh. When this is all over, Jack, can we go and live in a little cottage? Yes, with roses round the door. Oh, yes. And a big fridge in the kitchen. What do you want a big fridge for? To keep all the big joints of meat in. Well, after the war. Oh, yes, after the war. Not that we won't have a joint or two before then, of course. <laughs> oh, who goes there? All right, Pike. Well done. It's in the house. Any sign of anything? No, it's been ever so quiet. Where's Corporal Jones? To where he should be on his wedding night. With his bride. <laughs> <laughs> you stupid boy. Hey, I'm Captain Madden. I've just been having a little chat with me and the wife, you know. I kept ever so alert, though. I've just sent her home. Yes, that's all right now. Mm. Now, Simon Wilson has found a bottle of champagne, so we thought we'd come and drink your health. Oh, that's good, isn't it? <laughs> Hand the glasses round. And well, I haven't brought any glasses, sir. <laughs> <laughs> What's the good of champagne without glasses? Well, I thought you said you were going to bring the glasses. Where would I find glasses? Well, I don't have one. There's a, a couple of mugs here I brought for our cook. I can use them. Oh, well, I got my medicine glass. Yeah. Yes, well, I suppose that'll have to do then. All right. Pour it out. All right. There you are, Jensie. Keep a good look out over the sea, boy. You're, uh, you're too young for champagne, anyway. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Hello. What are you lot doing here? In case you'd forgotten, there's an invasion alert on. Don't you heard it was a false alarm? We got to stand down half an hour ago. Well, so Hitler won't be joining us tonight, then? No. It's just as well were you lot guarding us. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, I mean, look at you. What good would you be against real soldiers? Oh, dear. They'd walk straight through you. Good night. Here, he's no business to... All right, all right. Don't take any notice of him, man. Here's to your future health. Yes, here's to yeah, you, Jones. Good, 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 good luck to you. Mr. Manry. Oh? Warden wasn't right, was he, when he said the Nazis would walk straight through us? Of course he wasn't right. I know one thing. They're not walking straight through me. Not me. I'll be beside you, Jonesy. We'll all be beside you, Jonesy. We'll stick together. You can rely on that. Anybody who tries to take our homes or our freedom away from us, they'll find out what we can do. We'll fight. <coughs> and we're not alone. There are thousands of us all over England. And Scotland. And Scotland. <laughs> all over Great Britain, in fact. Men who will stand together when their country needs them. Excuse me, sir. Don't you think it might be a nice idea if we were to pay our tribute to them? For once, Wilson, I agree with you. <laughs> to Britain's Home Guard. The Britain's Home Guard. Home Guard. <laughs>